Hey everybody, this is Andy from Tennis Euphoria and I've noticed that Dunlop have been going for it recently. Seems to be some new racket releases coming out from them at the moment quite aggressively. So I've taken the last week or two to have a look at one of their rackets, uh, the Dunlop SX line. Uh, I went for the Tor, the 310 gram version for my review. And with this yellow styling, we can certainly see where this is aimed at. This is a spin orientated racket looking to take on the Head Extreme and the Babolat Pure Aero. Now I have a Pure Aero. Uh, I've hit with that a fair bit over the years, never sort of stuck to it, but I know how that plays. And I also have um, a Head Extreme, the Graphene 360 uh, version in the MP and the pro version in my collection, so I know how they play too. Uh, the new extremes are obviously with us and they're next on my review list. So subscribe to the channel if you want to see that review, which should come out in the next week or two. So how does this Dunlop compare? First of all, let's have a look at the specs. So I went for the tour version, as you know. So 1619 string pattern a nice 64 RA, so potentially more comfortable than its competitors. Standard length, 310 grams unstrung with a 315 balance point, and of course that 100 square inch head. And let's have a look at some of the technology. So Dunlop's Strixon material, I'm quite a fan of. I really liked the CX295 square inch Tor. Thought that was a really good 95 square inch head, needed some extra weight, but nevertheless, I like that in the 16 by 19 version. So the feel I expect to be quite nice. Looking at the shaft, different to the pure aero shaft, but I see some similarities to the head extremes. Also, if you notice, there is something quite different going on here with regards to the bottom of the shaft. Or is that so different? When I thought about where I'd seen something similar before, I went back to the uh, Technifiber T-Flash, and there is a little bit of a similarity there in their 100 square inch um, shaft down here. Dunlop make quite a big deal on their marketing, their website about their spin boost technology and strings. And um, looking at the marketing, they claim that that gives you a nice combination of power, but also control. So more spin, but it keeps it in. And when I compare, actually the Head Extreme has spin boost grommets too, as does the Babolat Pure Aero. So I'm not too sure that that's revolutionary. However, what I would say is that you can see that the strings and the grommets are kind of designed to get the strings to move both kind of laterally and also up and down, if that makes sense, if you can see those arrows. So you know, maybe there's a sort of development of the technology. So I'm left with Perhaps a view that there is not necessarily groundbreaking technology here. I've seen a lot of it before. However, perhaps there are some developments on some of those things you see in the other lines. And also it's kind of bringing them all together. And I seem to remember there was a pretty bright bloke once who said, the whole is greater than the sum of all its parts. And that's kind of what I think about this Dunlop. You've got kind of lots of elements of the competing lines all going on in one place. So how does it feel on court? Uh, first hits does have that quite nice sort of shricks on feel to it. Uh, what I describe that is, is just kind of quite a nice feel. It doesn't feel over complicated, just a nice uh, controlled response, quite plush. And it certainly feels comfortable is my uh, initial reaction to hitting with it. When I compare it certainly to the Pure Aero, I think it's very evident quite quickly that it is uh, more comfortable. As is the case with a lot of these sort of tweener 100 square inch rackets, depth comes easy. I mean, it is a powerful racket. And certainly initially you get a bit of a honeymoon period. I always find with any 100 square inch racket where you kind of feel like you're getting a bit of extra depth, you're getting a little bit of extra pop on your serves and you kind of think, wow, you know, I should be playing with a 100 square inch to really help me out. 
playing with it actually was sort of coming to realize that yeah you know I can play quite effectively with this and it is helping me out with a little bit of depth I certainly feel the directional control and picking targets in that respect uh, I preferred this racket to the aero uh, and the extreme in that regard once I sort of dialed in, I kind of felt that it probably had similar levels of power to the aero, but for some reason I wasn't quite getting the same spin. And I think that's down to that aero shaft just bringing sort of brilliant spin really. And then with regards to the extreme, I was kind of getting the other. When I compare it to the direct comparison, the extreme pro, I felt that I was getting similar spin, but not quite as much power. But ultimately between the three, uh, it was splitting hairs. Probably they all develop a lot of power quite easily uh, and you can generate good spin. I'm not a fan of the pure aero banana color, I've got to admit. Uh, also just felt that the extremes in that yellow, the previous was just too kind of bright and leery. Maybe that's just my age. So I kind of preferred this kind of rather conservative uh, black racket with a little bit of yellow on it. Have to say that the new extremes gray styling, I think looks great, but personal thing, but certainly I would probably go for the Dunlop just because I'm uh, a bit older now and not as leery as I used to be. And then as the review went on, I was quite enjoying playing with it. I have to say it was just kind of efficient though, really. I can't say that I was really falling in love with it. But the thing that I would say isn't necessarily specific to this racket, but it's the same for me across any power and spin racket at 100 square inches. I think if you have technique like mine and you don't play with sort of Western grips and generate a lot of natural spin, you've got to be careful if you look at rackets. And I've managed to sort of pinpoint two little clips to help with that. Uh, first of all, uh, if you don't generate a lot of spin, it does generate a lot of power and the, and the ball can fly on you. Uh, here's me playing with one of my hidden partners. He won't mind me putting this up, but he hit with it uh, just for a couple of games and he has a very flat backhand and this um, was sort of typically happening for him unless he really sort of adjusted his, his technique. So it wasn't right for him. I can kind of concur with that as well on my forehand side. So I could play with the racket quite effectively, but I was having to change my technique. I was having to reduce my swing and I was also changing my finish point. So um, you know, if we're coaching kids, knees to trees, that was kind of difficult. I found with this racket, I found myself coming over my torso quite a lot finishing in a position that was more like sort of hugging myself um, and that really isn't good from a strength and conditioning uh, kinetic point of view that is not going to be good in the long run for my shoulder and I was finding that to be you know sort of quite uncomfortable in terms of how much I was having to adjust my technique to keep the ball in. Granted this was mainly proven a problem with approach shots at the baseline it was just about adjusting your technique a little, swinging a little bit less to keep the ball in but then ultimately that meant that I felt I wasn't quite hitting the targets that I wanted and what I found is if I compare it to the rackets that I enjoy then actually I still get as good a depth with those I just sort of hit out a little bit more with the full swing which is better for my body and also is much more enjoyable. So where does that leave me? I guess there's no surprises with this racket. It plays exactly how you'd expect a spin orientated 100 square inch racket plays. Plenty of power, nice spin. I think the Shrixon and the RA does make it more comfortable than the Pure Aero. Personally, I haven't had an issue with the most recent head extreme with regards to comfort, but I know a lot of others have. So I think if you are in the market for a comfortable spin orientated 100 square inch racket, then this is a really good option. Volleys, it's fantastic. So I guess because of that 100 square inches, you don't need to make loads of contact or movement on the ball to get a return in. So I was finding that that was a real positive. Made me think about maybe doubles players perhaps doing well with this racket. You know, it can generate um, big serves. It can give you some good kick on your second serve. And ultimately it's quite a weapon at the net because of the 100 square inches. But there was one downside that I wish I could have recorded for you guys in some way, but those spin grommets creates a sound on impact. It's like a <laughs> um, 
excuse that, but it's kind of odd. You kind of hear those strings sort of rubbing up and down in those grommets and maybe against each other. And that sort of sound, I was sort of noticing every time I connected with the ball and I would have got used to it, but initially I just found it odd. So is it gonna do well? well my expectation is if you're a up and coming junior, if you're sort of younger than me, you're probably gonna go for the Larry styling and be convinced by Rafa to take the pure aero, uh, or you're gonna like the head extreme with the likes of Berrettini um, endorsing that racket. However, if you're after a lot of the characteristics of good spin and you're worried about your arm, I think you should look at this Dunlop. Also, if you are in the sort of stage in your tennis journey where a bit of extra depth is needed um, and also sort of keeping the ball in with some spin, if you have a Western grip is also a requirement, then this could be quite a good racket if comfort is high on your list. So not a bad racket at all. Personally, I think if you have technique like mine, not Western grips, hit relatively flat and enjoy hitting out, then this isn't the racket for you. Um, that's not to say that it's down to this racket. I just think that people with that sort of playing style should really be looking at rackets that complement those characteristics and probably shouldn't be looking at spin rackets with 100 square inches. There's plenty of good 98 square inch rackets out there that would probably be right for you. And also if you are fit, full swings, got good timing, then there's plenty of 95 square inch rackets that would probably suit your game much better. Thanks for watching the review. Hope it was helpful. Please do subscribe to the channel because that really helps me. Next up is gonna be that new Extreme line and also the new Pure Drive. I'm also going to have a bit of a random one and review the uh, Prince 93Ps for you. So if you're keen on my thoughts on those three sets of rackets, please do subscribe to the channel. Videos will be with you soon. See you soon.